What's going on guys? This is Dr. Kevin Lopez here bringing you another AI roundup and today I have a special one for you. It's root code and I'm going to show you how to install it and use it. Now, what is root code? Well, you can think of it as an agent that lives in your IDE and it can do all sorts of things from chatting, working on code, refactoring code and even architecting code. And today we're actually going to be connecting it locally to a local model so that we do not incur any costs. All right. So to start, you need to install VS code onto your system. There's a few different versions, Windows, Mac and Linux. I'm going to be using the Windows version attached to a WSL container. The next step is to install root code into your VS code. And this is easy. All right, so now that we have VS code installed, I have taken the liberty to have a spinning hexagon code base here. It's essentially what everyone is doing where we do the spinning hexagon. So what I'm gonna show you now is how to install a root code. So let's go here, let's go to extensions. Let's take a look at extensions. What we're gonna do is we're going to look up root code so I look up root code let me install it here I'm gonna actually take a look at it let's install it okay trust and install all right cool now you can see we got the little kangaroo here and here's our root code you can see here's our welcome screen and we have the ability to choose API provider and keys all right, so one of the first steps we have to do here is we actually have to modify slightly the model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to take a look at QN3, 30B, A3B. It's a 30 billion parameter model and it has 3 billion active parameters. You can check my video on this in the cards above. So we're going to go ahead and run it. Now we're in the model, we can chat with it, we can talk to it, but actually what we're interested in doing is changing a few settings. So let's go ahead and change those settings now. So what we want to do, we want to go ahead and we want to change the context size because root code requires actually quite a bit of context. We have to go and change it. So I'm going to change it to a 16 K context. Let's go ahead and change it to 16 K. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to save the model, right? Since I've already saved the model, I'm not going to resave it, but this is the command. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go and tell it bye, and that will take us out. That's the first step we need to do. All right. So now that we have root code installed, we're going to go over a few settings, but first let me show you that this program actually runs. So let's go ahead and hit run. And now, as you can see, it does actually run. We can go ahead and add some more balls and you can see it does function. All right, cool. So now what we're going to do is we're going to first go into here to settings and we're going to change Anthropic into Olama. That's the server that we're using. You have to enter in your base URL and select the model that you're interested in. For this, I'm going to select root code Quen 330B A3B. So we're going to go ahead and hit save. We're going to hit done. One thing we're going to do is we're going to check the MCP servers and make sure this is unchecked. I'm going to hit done. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to modify the prompt a little bit. So for code, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and add a no think flag to this model for code, but for everything else, we're going to leave it as is. So just for code, if you're using this model, you can disable thinking by adding in slash no underscore think. So let's hit done. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to first ask the model a question. We're going to go into ask mode. We're going to ask the model a question. We're going to ask it, are there any doc 
strings in the code. So we're going to ask it that. And it's going to go ahead and make the request for us with a request. And it's going to start thinking. Model is a thinking model because we're in ask mode. So let's go ahead and let it think. So it's going to ask us to approve the read, right? It always is going to ask us. But actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to auto approve reads. Every time it wants to read, it's OK to read a file. I don't want it to write, but it's OK to read. So let's go ahead and let it read. So it's starting to read the file. It's looking for all of the different doc strings that are in the file. And in this file, I've intentionally left out all of the doc strings. There's no doc strings in this file. OK. It does not contain any doc strings. So we got our answer. Here it is. Task completed. The code spinning hexagon.py does not contain any doc strings. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to code mode. We're going to ask it, add doc strings to the class ball and any of its sub functions. Okay, so let's go ahead. Okay, here it is. So now you can see the diff here. We can see that it added in some doc string to the class ball. Added it to every sub function. Very cool. Okay, and it added it actually to everything inside of ball and hexagon, which is not what we want, is it? We're going to reject that change. What we're going to do is we're going to tell it we only want doc strings in the ball class. So we're going to go ahead and make that request. And let's see what the model does now. Okay, so here it is. You can see here it wrote some comments. And this is the only place it wrote the comments. Sometimes you have to prompt the model a little bit to get exactly what you want. But here we are. And it gives us the args. We have here, it takes care of the args. Very cool. There's no returns in this function or in the class. So um, I'm happy with this change. Awesome. So that's our first edit with root code. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and have it make us a unit test for the distance function. So let's go ahead and have it make us one. We're going to add this file. I'm going to add it. Make me a unit test for the distance function. Use unit test and choose three test to test and you choose the rest of the okay so we're gonna ask it to make a unit test for us and we're gonna tell it that it can do whatever test it wants and we're going to tell it we want it to make the test function here. I want to place it here. OK, here it is starting to write the test for us now. Excellent. OK, so here it is. It wrote a test for us. Where it's going to test distance, positive values, distance, negative values, zero distance, large values and decimal values. So let's go ahead. We want to actually save that. So let's save it. OK, here it is. Now the task is complete. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask it. Actually, it came up with how to test it. So let's run it, actually. And it did not import it. So we're going to tell it 
we got this error. Okay, let's run the command actually. It's gonna run it for us. Okay, so it did that. And it, it did not fix it for us automatically. It gave us, so we're gonna go ahead and tell it we wanna modify this. And it's gonna ask us to choose the spinning hexagon. It's gonna read both files. So let's go ahead and let it read. Test distance, let's see. Okay, here it is, okay. It looks like it wants to import it. Let's save it. Now let's see what it comes up with. Okay. It's gonna test these three cases, these several cases rather. Let's see if it can let us run the command. Okay, and here it is. ran and it ran okay so we can actually double check it ourselves run it here boom here we are ran five tests in 0, 0.00 seconds very cool all right guys that's all i have for you today if you like today's content and want to see more content like it like and subscribe and if you have any video ideas feel free to drop a comment below thanks and i'm out see ya